Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 15 of Around the Kingdom, a Disney Magic Kingdoms podcast by a guy who needs a fairy godmother. Coming to you from Cinderella's Castle, I am your host, Steve Squirrel, and back this week, we have a very special guest joining us again. Let's give a warm Around the Kingdom welcome to a geeky chick. Hey, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us this week as we explore the wonderful world of Disney Magic Kingdoms. We are so glad you're all here. We've had a lot more people just recently tuning in, and I want to thank each and every one of you for listening, and we hope you all enjoy the show. Before I get started, I want to give a big shout out to our newest Patreon, Anita Anderson. And of course, as always, Carrie Schumann. It's your support that will continue to allow us to do the awesome things we do and will help make this show even better. If you want to help support the show and have your name read at the beginning of each episode, please check out our Patreon page at patreon.com backslash around the kingdom for more information. Also, if you want to be more involved in the show, you can follow us on Twitter at at ATK Podcast and like our Facebook page at facebook.com backslash ATK Podcast. Here you'll find out before anyone else about any breaking news we hear, information on contests and giveaways, when new shows are published, and of course, my ramblings and photos from my day-to-day playing. Also, the show's Facebook page is up and running, and it is a great way to easily interact with me and the other fans of the show to talk about our favorite game. It is getting really, really hopping. It's a really awesome, tight-knit community, so please join us there. Um, You'll have a great time, and there's lots of cool people in there. The link to our group will be in the show notes, and you can also find it on the show's main Facebook page. The kingdom is always changing, so for reference, this show is being recorded Wednesday, January 9th at around 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. All right, introductions are done. They're out of the way. We can get into the show. And now we always start out with our week in the kingdom. So a geeky chick, what have you been doing this week in the kingdom? Uh, not a lot. I did finally officially welcome Tia. I feel like that's all I ever talk about on your show. It's like, I need to welcome. I had her around the same time you got her, but then I delayed it so that I could record. And then the whole holidays, and I, I wasn't playing the game that much. But I, I have welcomed her. I am about three or four tokens away from welcoming Michael. So I've been collecting his. I need to do... What is it? Oh, the classic costumes for Minnie and Pete. I have enough to get one of them, but I kind of want to do them both at the same time. So I've been waiting to have enough for both. And I need a few more of the button black and white fabric. And that's about it. Besides leveling up characters, that's about it. That's cool, though. Uh, the uh, The classic characters are a lot of fun. Uh, and they're definitely fun to switch in and out of. So uh, it, it's really cool watching them like all interact on the steamboat. So that that will be a lot of fun when you get to complete that. And congratulations on Tia. It only took you eight months. <laughs> <laughs> um, for my, my week in the kingdom um, was way slower than last week. Last week, I think I, I babbled on about my week in the kingdom for probably about 20 minutes. Um, and so this week, it's much, much shorter. Um, since, since last week, because we had the live stream on Friday... So, um, uh, you know, they made the announcement about uh, the uh, Mickey and Friends and the uh, Toy Story um, characters all being, oh, I'm sorry, Monsters Inc. characters being, um, you know, balanced. So I really just put everything on pause and just started working on leveling those characters. Um, I, I'm ready to click the button and welcome Baloo, um, but I put that on hold. Um, in order to just keep leveling my, my characters. So I got the first, my first priority was getting Donald uh, to 10 because he was at nine. And the last thing I want to do is start collecting more legendary, um, you know, tokens <laughs> for Donald. Um, so that was the priority number one. Um, and then I've just been going through and kind of like, you know, I was taking educated guesses on which characters I thought would be impacted the most. And most of them were the ones that I guessed right. Kind of like, you know, the ones that had like, like Boo, for example, like she only needed like, one token per level so like at, at level h you just needed eight of each token so like you knew like those are the characters that were going to kind of get hit um so i tried to like focus on them and uh that's about it so I, I i've just been working on them i've been working on getting my magic up because i welcomed 
so, I did so much storyline at so, at once that like uh, you know I was spending two hundred and fifty thousand magic, then another one hundred fifty thousand, then another hundred. You know, like my my magic just flew. Plus I was leveling characters and I had bought all those story. It was just madhouse. So I'm just really trying to replenish my magic supply. Um, so that that's really been about it. Um, my, that's that's been my whole week in the kingdom. My lifetime visitors board. I am now rank one hundred and seventy five thousand eight hundred and eighty. So the uh, the race to one hundred and fifty continues. <laughs> nice. Um, You're catching up to me. Oh yeah. Well, sort of. Well, I'm like seventy thousand something. Wow, that's that's great though. But one one of these days, one of these days. But uh, <laughs> but no, uh, I'm I'm happy for where I'm at, and uh, especially because I've not been playing all that long, relatively speaking. So. All right, so let's just keep it, keep it moving um, and move into the newcomer tip of the week. Uh, this week I want to tackle it um, because um, I was thinking about doing uh, saying something about this and then um, good friend of the show, Allison, um, I always talk about her. She's my official production assistant and moderator. <laughs> um, we were talking about uh, strategies for the upcoming Tower Challenge and she had mentioned um, a strategy that she was going to use and I was like, huh. You know, I use that. I've used that strategy before. It's a perfect strategy, and and I want to tell you know the listeners of the show. So, if you're not familiar with the tower challenge, or you kind of know how it works, one thing to know, you know, like we, we say, like get your Mickey and characters, keep Mickey and friends characters up, get your Toy Story, get your Monsters Inc. Work on all the, you know, there's a lot to like focus on, and it can get overwhelming, right? But here's the main deal about it. As much as it's good to have all of your characters to a high level, what I highly suggest focusing on is getting at least one character in each of the sets or the storylines to 10. So, like, get Mickey to 10. Get, like, Buzz to 10 or Woody. Get, um, like, Mike or Sully to 10. Um, you know, and, and you know, like you know, for each of those, like get Rapunzel to ten. Like you know, try to get one of each of the main storyline characters to ten. And the reason I say this is because the way the Tower Challenge works is you have your specific storyline or storylines, as we'll get into later, that you can choose per slot. And for each slot, you know, you, every day you get a, 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 all your characters get refreshed. So. You send your characters out. You send one character out for two hours. You send another character out for two hours, right? But eventually you're going to get to a point where all your characters are used. And you're going to want to start using your refresher tokens, a.k.a. the hot chocolates. Well, you can just keep using the same level 10 guy over and over and over and over again. You don't have to keep switching it up. And frankly, it's probably easier to do it that way because if you just send the same five people out over again, they're always going to be ready when you're t- you, know, you, you collect your quest, um, you, you, you get your Maleficent coins, and then you just send them back out. So if you have you know, one of dead 10 in each of those storylines and you have refreshers, you can just keep sending those high-level characters out. Um, so that is definitely how I, I think uh, the, one of the best ways to proceed is is to focus on that 10. And then, of course, it's always great to have everyone else up. Same thing for the side, you know, stories. You know, a lot of people, you know, like, you know, they like to, like, get everyone to four and then everyone to five and then everyone to six. And I think that's great and all, but I think a good strategy is to try to get at least one, you know, of the main characters of each storyline to 10. This way you have the ability to for those refreshers. What do you think about that, Geeky Chick? I think it's a really good tip. I had never thought of doing that myself, but when I read it in the notes, I was like, oh my gosh, that makes so much sense because usually I, I, I will, I find it common that a lot of us have so many of those token refreshers left over at the end of the event and they don't do anything. They don't roll over. You don't get any kind of exchange. So it's really perfect to, instead of going and even using those lower level characters to just focus on the ones that are 10 or you know the highest level possible and just keep repeating them i think that's a really really good tip yeah and there's lots of ways you can do it um you know i I always i I do have token refreshers left over i only had them on the last tower challenge because i was in a much better shape but if you're a newer player you know you're collecting less refreshers um you're probably not getting as high on the leaderboards so refreshers are a little harder to come by so you kind of want to save those for like 
um, the third round because that's usually when you have less characters. That's like when you're your you're, yeah. you're, you're Rapunzel characters and possibly you know your Sleeping Beauty and Wall-E, Wall-E. Um, and those you know. And so it's harder for some of the newer players to get. So refreshers become even more important. Um, but yes, that is a great way to use them. So I hope that that helps some people out there. If you have any questions about that, hit me up on Twitter, hit me up on Facebook, join our Facebook group, and and let's talk about it. But that is uh, what I think is a good strategy, Um, especially you probably have about maybe a week and a half, I would say, maybe two weeks until the next Tower Challenge. So, um, you know, get (laughs) cracking. All right, so that's the Newcomer Tip of the Week. Let's just keep it moving. Roll right on into the game news. Well, last Friday we had a live stream. Yay! Yay. And there was lots and lots of stuff that was talked about on the live stream, and we are going to talk all about that right now. Um, The stuff that happened on the live stream all dropped into a patch that uh, came out yesterday, which was Tuesday, the 8th of January. And um, yeah, so let's get right into it. We've got some new permanent content. Uh, that is right. Um, it was We talked about it on the last show. They had teased it around New Year's. Um, Cinderella was going to get some new permanent content, and they did. Lady Tremaine, Anastasia, and Drizella were all introduced as uh, permanent characters uh, for the storyline. Lady Tremaine came out in a bundle that you could get for $7.99 US dollars and um, it would, you'd get Lady Tremaine and 115 gems or you could buy Lady Tremaine um, just for 300 gems. She was the only of the three that are premium characters. The other two you could get just by doing quests. 300 gems is a good price for a premium character, I think. Um, so yeah. I, I, what, what do you think? Uh, so l- let's let's get your thoughts, Geeky Chick, on first uh, the new... The new uh, step uh sisters and uh stepmother that have joined the kingdom as well as uh the cost for lady Tremaine. What, what do you think about all that stuff i was excited the cinderella set always felt incomplete especially in the beginning it was just the prince and cinderella then we added the fairy godmother i think it but now it feels even more complete with uh they have a villain the stepsisters the stepmother so i'm excited to see them in the game it felt kind of empty without them especially the the stepmother i think the bundle price and the gym prices well the bundle i don't know i didn't do the bundle i did the gems (laughs) i did do it um 7.99 i don't know for permanent content i don't know what are we haven't had some permanent content in a while like gem character i don't know what the normal bundle price we see is. But. Well, but traditionally, I think for most of the um, content, it's it's uh, minus like Pluto at the beginning of the game, it's nine ninety nine mm-hmm. for the bundles. Yeah. So this is actually $2 cheaper. Yeah, it is a little cheaper then. Yeah, I didn't do it though. I did the gems this time. When I, I'm usually always doing, telling people, get the bundle, get the bundle. And it is a good deal. Like when you calculate um, how much 300 gems is versus... The seven ninety nine plus you get one hundred and fifteen, you know, extra. Yeah, no, I I, I agree. Um, I I think the bundle's good for someone that's newer. Um, I can't tell you is it worth it yet, um, because we we don't we haven't played with her enough. We don't really know what's going on with her yet. Um, but I think it's a fair price at seven ninety nine, um, because you get the character and you get one hundred fifteen gems, which is nice. Um, yeah. it's how I built up my gem collection at the beginning. Um, but I, I'm, I'm, I go ahead and do the 300 gems as well. I think that's a good price for permanent content. And, um, and so I'll be adding her to that, my kingdom that way. Um, so yeah, I, I agree. I'm, I'm excited that we have um, them in the kingdom. Um, I, I agree that, that you can get that incomplete feeling. I started the game. Fairy Godmother was already in it. Um, mm-hmm. But now Jacques and Gus uh, feel like they're, they're <laughs> missing, you know, so... Yeah. Uh, I, I could definitely see a third line of Cinderella coming, you know, a third row of characters coming sometime in the in the near future, or probably in the distant future, but it, it gives them the ability to expand it out that way, too. Um, they might actually be cool, like, Tower Challenge content, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so, um, we'll have to just see. But, uh, yeah, no, I, I'm excited. Uh, have you played through any of the storyline yet? 
A little bit of it. I, I welcome Lady Tremaine and but I have not what is it, Drusella? I haven't got her yet. Okay. And, and did you did you welcome Anastasia yet? No. Wait, who comes first? Wait, who comes first? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I think I think Drusilla comes first. Okay. Yeah, Drusilla is first. And so I'm working on her. Okay. And so then working on Anastasia her. is after, yeah. yeah. I'm close though. I'll tell I'll tell you the truth. Just just so the listeners aren't confused, I have yet not updated my game yet. Um, the patch dropped yesterday. I, I actually just started a new job in real life, um, so um, I've just been super busy. And um, between that and some other things going on, I have not had a chance to update. I'm actually going to do it first thing tomorrow morning. Um, I'm going to wake my daughter up, and we're gonna I'm going to update the game, and then she'll see the pop up, and we'll. Um, we'll, we'll buy Lady Tremaine with the gems and I'll read all the content to her and I'll do it in my silly voices as terrible as they are. So, uh, <laughs> so anyway, so I'm excited for that. Um, and, and it's cool. I'm, I'm, I'm glad that it's permanent content and I'm glad it's just do it at your own speed because yeah. there's so many other things going on right now that, uh, that I'm glad that I'm not being rushed because it really, uh, there's been like Wreck-It Ralph was just so much and before Wreck-It Ralph like there was just it was just non-stop like two weeks between episodes you know between things and I'm really enjoying this extended downtime right now to really just kind of catch up and um and just feel like when the next event comes that I'm like not so far behind you know I agree so but all right let's move on to do you have anything else to talk about the Cinderella characters or you want to move on with that no that was it Okay, cool. So we also now they they had mentioned the tower challenge. The tower challenge will be coming, um, and um, will be Mulan themed. Um, and they did not say when the tower challenge would specifically be coming. However, as we discussed in the last week's episode, um, the twenty fifth of January is when Disney officially starts the. Um, the Lunar New Year um, Mulan parades and festivals down in the kingdoms. So, uh, and the Chinese New Year um, is on, I believe, the f- we said the 5th of February. So, uh, I would expect the Tower Challenge to start before the 25th. Um, so, uh, I would say, you know, probably probably before that. So, I'd say probably in about two weeks. Uh, from now, we should we'll, we'll be getting the start because the tower challenges are usually fourteen days, right? They're two weeks long. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's what they said on the live stream. I think they mentioned about they said two weeks or a few couple of weeks from now. Yeah, so we don't have an exact date, but that that's my guess um, for maybe like around like twenty first, twenty second, which is like Monday, Tuesday of the of that week. So get ready because uh, it's coming. So start preparing yourselves. So what we learned was is that Cricky will be uh, the character that you get in the Tower Challenge. Um, it seems to be, uh, and I don't, it's it's been a little unclear, but it seems like he'll be the characters that you're going to be collecting the tokens for, like usual, um, where each uh, round of the chapters, like you're going to be collecting tokens. Um, but what they did say was is that he was going to help with Mulan's comfy costume. Yeah. So. I'm not really sure how they're going to work it this time. Um, so it will be very interesting to see uh, the dynamic for this. Maybe you earn Cricky um, just with Maleficent coins, possibly, and then you use him to get the costumes. I'm, I'm not really sure how it's going to happen. Uh, it's kind of a mystery. I mean, do you have any insight on, on what's going on with that? No, I was a little confused, too, because they were like... Once you get him, he'll help to be able to get. I did. They say like the. La- I felt like they said like the last token or something. You get the tokens for the comfy costume. So it was, it was kind of confusing. Yeah, it's no, nothing that we've done before. Yeah, they said that Mulan's costume would be like the final prize yeah. from the Tower Challenge. Usually, and traditionally, the final prize is what you're earning the tokens for each time, which is the character. Yeah. So. I wonder if the tower challenge will be like longer, you know, like then, oh, yeah. you know, like they, maybe they'll extend it out a couple of days so that the third chapter will be over. You'll have Cricky and then you'll have five days or something to earn tokens with Cricky to get Mulan's costume. Maybe, uh, you know, you'll probably need to get the glitched fabric again. And then maybe he, he and some other people help you collect for 
um, Mulan's comfy costume. That's just something I could, you know, off the top of my head. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so we'll have to see. Um, are you super excited for Cricky? No. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even like I've seen Mulan and I, I've seen it recently, but I still was like, who's creaky? I had to look it up and I'm like, oh, the cricket. No, I'm not. excited. Yeah, I, I, I've watched Mulan. I need to watch it again with my daughter. Um, she loves Mulan. She actually loves Mulan, too, better than Mulan. And, uh, and, and as soon as I showed her the picture, she's like, it's cricky. Oh. So so she knew exactly who it is. So. She contains the excitement for both of us um, as, far, nice. as far as Cricky goes. Um, so she's super excited about that. And so, so by proxy, I am as well. Um, but I, I think it will be fun. Um, you know, who doesn't like a good chirping character? Um, I'd rather have Jiminy Cricket, but... <laughs> <laughs> so something um that they didn't talk about on the live stream which um was found in the patch notes uh which i wanted to talk about is that there will be multi collection character slots this is a first to the tower challenges it seems that every tower challenge they're adding a new little twist so what it is is um there will be two possible so in, in one slot, there'll be two storylines. So, for example, there'll be Rapunzel and, um, let's say, Sleeping Beauty. Uh, as mm-hmm. or, or I think it was Mickey and Friends and Rapunzel or, or something of that nature, but it doesn't matter. You'll have two different character sets or storylines that will be filling one slot of the character you send to the tower. So... At first, I was thinking that's great. You know, uh, obviously, this is a, a fantastic addition. This is this is a really um, excellent thing for newer players, um, especially um, you know for the, the later on, like you know round two, round three, when you start getting into the Rapunzel characters and Wally, and um, you know, to, to to things like, for example, the Jungle Book or other things where you know people haven't got there yet. So they can combine them. So I was like, okay, well, but then I was like, okay, they usually have four characters per slot. Are they going to have eight characters? Are they going to have four four characters from one fork from the other? And so I think, and my theory would be, is that there would only be half the options for each. So like if you're going to have Mickey and Friends and Rapunzel, you'll probably only have two choices from Mickey and Friends and two choices from Rapunzel. But that's just a guess. This is just... My speculation. What what do you think is going to be the way that they're going to handle that? I didn't even think of that. I could see them doing like that. Then how does that really, really help people? Then I wouldn't be as excited as I was before. But then having eight possible characters does seem kind of like an overload. Yeah, no, that would be overkill for sure. And it would also kind of take away, you know, uh, some of the value of refreshers. So. Yeah. So they, they, I think they have to make it just, you know, like, you know, traditionally there's no more than five, but it's usually mm-hmm. four, four slots per, or, you know, per, per, four characters per slot. So I would assume that they, they would do like two and two. So it does help, it does help newer characters because it, they, they can use, um, you know, because they might not have any. Like, if, if they get to Rapunzel, a newer player might not have any Rapunzel. So at least if they have Mickey and friends at Rapunzel, it gives them an option for more. I would um, love to see that with the Wally, where we only have two characters. I would love to see a side by side with that one. Yes. Um, yeah. No. Wally is a perfect example of why you need refreshers round three, um, because yeah. you only have two, so you just need to keep sending, you know, Wally or Eve out. So. Um, but yeah, so I think that it's a great addition. I'm very excited for it. I think that it's I, there's definitely no harm to it. You know what I mean? Like there's no downside yeah. to it, um, especially for for more experienced players. Um, so I think it's just something to help newer players with the tower challenges, which is one of the big mm-hmm. um, things that newer players complain about with the tower challenges is just not having enough characters or enough characters at the right levels. So this is a fantastic job by the devel- development team. Uh, great job, Game Loft, on this. Yeah, I get a lot of questions like, how do I, as a newer player, you know, I can never finish a tower challenge. I can't get enough tokens or points. And so I'm excited. Anytime that you can tell that they're listening and they're trying to 
help us out. I'm excited. Cool. All right. So now we're going to go into the next thing that we have. There are going to be two new Mulan outfits. Um, so the first one we already uh, briefly discussed, uh, which is Mulan's comfy outfit. And as they said, it will be the final reward of the tower challenge. Um, so any other ideas about this or just kind of leave it with what we talked about? Uh, what do you think? Yeah, I guess we don't, we didn't really get enough hints on that. It was just the final reward. So I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> we'll just have to see. <laughs> um, so the other one. Which is also something I'm, I'm a little confused about is Mulan's warrior uh, outfit, which is just a new outfit that's going to be added to the game as well. Um, and it will be um, limited time, but permanent content in a way. Um, so the way that they described it is that you will be able to get the warrior uh, outfit by collecting tokens in ruby chests during the event. And then, after the event, they will be in the Mulan Legendary Chests. I did reach out to Gameloft for clarification and have not heard back from them. So as soon as I do hear back from them, I will post it to my Twitter and Facebook accounts, I assure you, um, as some clarification breaking news. Um, so I don't really know how that's going to work. Do you, do you have any, any more clarification into that, Geeky Chick? I'm guessing that the fabric or... Well, because usually they need more, but it sounds like maybe the main fabric or whatever we need will be in the ruby chest. They didn't mention if we were going to be able to collect those. They only mentioned in the ruby chest. And they did say that the ruby chest would be a calendar reward, login reward. So we'll get some ruby chest that way. And then if you don't have enough to get, or I guess if you don't, I'm not sure, but if you don't have enough, to get the warrior costume when it's done, then maybe, like you said, after the event, it'll be in the legendary chest. I, I don't know. Yeah, I yeah have to no, I, the I, again, the, the tokens are confusing. And our, our famous Chinese hackers, as we, we, we talked about last episode, mm -hmm. um, it did reveal the calendar for um, all the rewards for January. And there is only one ruby chest. So, oh, wow. so I don't know. Will there be ruby chests in the kingdom like will they be like instead of buying bronze chests mm -hmm. like will you have an opportunity to find ruby chests in the kingdom you know uh that's that, well, that you know it, maybe that's something that happens you know uh we don't we don't know we don't have any clarification i did reach out like i said to gameloft and when i have more information i will let all of you know don't we usually the ruby chests are those the ones that usually in the events that have the, the mini event. and decorations yeah. and things. Yes. The, uh, to, so I'm thinking to, we well, might well, have to buy those. Well, yeah, it, dep it, dep it depends the chest. Um, it depends, but you know, the color. But yeah, typically I would think like you would get those from the mini events. Yeah. But like, the then how many tokens do you need? Like, what else do you need? Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, there's not a lot of... It, 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 there's kind of a lot of question marks up in the air, and I guess maybe they just want to wait till the event begins. Um, but but I wish I had some more information to give you all. But all right, that that's it for the Mulan outfits. So we will wait and see on those. Now we have probably the biggest piece of breaking news. Um, there are new decorations coming to the park. The park billboards. Can you Those get... are so cute. <laughs> really? These yes. are I I, <laughs> I don't I don't I don't know what to say about these. Um the I, billboards? I, what? <laughs> Geeky chick, take this one, please. This is this is they all you. So cute. Like I was so excited. Just when I saw them, they were cute. And then so the new decorations, the park billboards, they have one for Cinderella and one for Beauty and the Beast, and they are modeled after real-life Disney Magic Kingdom billboards that are in the Disney park. So I thought that was even cute. And what was it? The Beauty and the Beast one even had the little red roses. It's, I love it. I need, like, multiple of them in my park. No? <laughs> 
I, I, I just don't know. <laughs> what? You weren't, you didn't get excited? Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, moving on to the next decoration, uh, the Mulan Target Dummies. Now, I wasn't excited about this one. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> it's, uh, it's okay. I get it. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's definitely part of the Mulan, um, you know, storyline. It's definitely part of, um, you know, it makes sense. I think it's, yeah. I think it makes a lot more sense than park billboards. Um, <laughs> but, uh, all right, let's move on into the new concession stands, which is something people are a lot more excited about here. Um, the first thing we have is the Sand Pale Sunday Stand. So, <laughs> now I could go for ice cream. Mark Andre was talking on the live stream about how he wanted to eat ice cream. Now I want to eat some ice cream. Um, but yeah, no, it, it looks like a very cute stand. Um, and I'm assuming that these three concession stands are going to be the, um, the rewards for, um for each individual chapter, like, you know, the, 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 the token collection yeah. rewards. So if that's the case, the chatter around town is that these um, will in some way, shape or form be clues to what the um, helper, uh, you know, uh, you know, the helpers for each chapter of the tower challenge will be. So the Sand Pal Sunday stand you think is Lilo and Stitch. Yeah, it matches the Lilo and Stitch there are the other concession stands. Right. So that being said, Lilo and Stitch might be um, coming, so this might be a set you want to work on. The next one is Jack Jack's Cookie Nom Nom stand. Yes, that wins the award for the best named stand in all of Disney Magic Kingdoms. Let's say it again. Jack Jack's Cookie Nom Nom stand. Yes. Um, so, again, it's a, a stand reward from the Tower Challenge, uh, we, we, we think. Um, so, big, big Incredibles clue. Um, wh what do you think of Jack Jack's Cookie Nom Nom stand? The name is long, but <laughs> I like the cookies. <laughs> yes I definitely agree um, okay and then we have the breakfast kanji stand which is um, Mulan related um, they talked about um, that directly on the live stream and it is basically bacon and eggs in a smiley face which I don't think gets much better um, that's what I'd like to eat for dinner tonight so um, yeah so cool stuff. So Mulan makes 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 sense. Uh, Mulan and Incredibles, and of course Lilo and Stitch. Those that's the speculation. So oh, I was going to say, besides Syndrome's wig, this will be the second Incredibles concession stand, and it's the like it's the first one that looks like it. Like it looks different. You know how each theme, the concession stands, you know, look different. Right. But Syndrome's wig stand just looks like a regular like the regular one you know like the burger stand and stuff but the nom nom stand it looked different you know yeah it's so a cool this would be the first time it's a cool looking stand it is but it'll be the first like incredibles themed looking stand if oh. i'm making sense well, that's pretty incredible yes i love concession stands so. <laughs> <laughs> my, my dad joke went right over her head all right, let's move on. Um, okay, new attractions. We have some new attractions coming to the park. Um, there are three new attractions, and they all look really, really awesome. Um, the first one uh, let's talk about is Reflections of China. Reflections of China is based on an attraction that is in Disney's Epcot uh, Center. And... Um, it is an interesting uh, attraction. So it will be found in platinum chests. So it will be another thing that I'll probably get before Bambi's ice rink. <laughs> um, so what do you what do you think about the reflections of China? Have you have you been to Disney? Have you ever seen this in person? 
Now, I haven't been to Disney in a long time. Like, I was like a little girl, so no. But I, mean, I still think it's pretty cool. I'm not excited about anything in the... You said this one is the platinum chest? Yeah, I'm not excited about that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's something. I, I, you know, people people might complain about things being in platinum chests, but there comes to a point where you're a person who, you know, has been playing a long time who doesn't have anything left to get in platinum chests. Yeah. So by putting something in there, it at least starts putting something in the pool of stuff they can get. Um, yeah. You know, I mean, I'm only two things away. The only th- things that I need at this point would be Bambi's Ice Rink and Splash Mountain. Um, um, I'll always consistently get, you know, legendary tokens for my characters. But um, if I were to ever run out of them, then I would possibly get an attraction. So, um yeah, no, so it's nice that they're adding that in. I think it's a really cool-looking attraction. Um, next one, uh, the Animation Academy. It is gorgeous. Yeah. Um, looks just like the real-life one. Um, probably one of the coolest-looking an- um, uh, new attractions that they've put out in a while. And what I love about it is that I think the devs listened to me because they, they did exactly what... <laughs> I said it a couple of shows ago uh, they should do, and they made it a Tapper event reward. So let me hear your thoughts on this, Geeky Chick, and then I'll go back to, to talking about why I, I think this is great. I like it. I think it looks really nice. It looks very sleek and modern. I like it. And I, I, I think that Tapper event reward, that's pretty good. And they usually like that those repeat. <laughs> so even if you don't get it the first time you'll see it again kind of like a, was it goofy's pirate costume yep and i was finally able to get that so yeah what they didn't say is if it's limited time like it might be limited to this but like would it come back um but i went off on a little little bit of a little bit of a a tangent we'll call it um when mickey's costume was was part of the um uh, it was one of the rewards during the Christmas time for the the event, and the event was a trophy uh, event. And I just mm-hmm. basically said, like, it's just so unfair to newer players because it, tro- trophy events are really um, heavily favored for more experienced players, right? Yeah. Because they have more more ways to collect. Just They have more attractions. They have more characters. They have more of everything that can get trophies. So I said, if you're going to do something like this, you should make it a Tapper event because everyone from the day one, or I guess until from day they get Pirate Mickey till, you know, someone that has literally everything, it, you're all on an even playing field. You all can start at 11 a.m. Eastern or whatever time, you know, the event starts and you can all tap and you can set your alarms and you can guarantee yourself to be rank one. Like, mm-hmm. it's guaranteed. If you set your alarm and you just follow that, no matter where you are, you will be rank one. Um, trust me, I know this because when I first started out, I was in the Big Hero 6 event, and that's exactly what I did. And um, and so that's why I think it's really great that they did it this way. Um, really, really kind to new players, because especially new players getting a nice new attraction, like, that's just nice, you know? Um, for me, it's just like where, like I get a new attraction. I say, where am I going to put this thing? Um, you know, so, um, so it's really nice. So, so great job game loft on that. Um, finally the carousel of progress. Um, one of my family's favorite rides in Disney. Um, it was Walt Disney's favorite ride. Um, and they keep updating it. Um, and it's probably been updated 10 times since I've been going. Um, <laughs> But it's, it's a great ride. Did, do you remember going there? Because it's been there when you were a kid. Do you remember going on that? Is this Disneyland or World? Uh, this is Disney World in Florida. Because I've been to Disneyland in California. I don't know if it's there, too. I'm pretty sure it's there, too. I don't but, remember. But, uh, yeah, no, it's it's the one you just go, you sit down, and then you look at all the different families over the different years and how life has changed. Yeah. It, it's a cool It's a cool little ride. Um, the best part about it, um, one of the best parts is, is that it's air conditioned and you're sitting down. So, uh, and there's almost no line, so you can just kind of sit down for 20 minutes and get into some air conditioning. Um, 
So, yeah, that's why uh, there. Now, it's going into Merlin Shop, and it is in Merlin Shop now, and it is for the bargain price of 30,000 elixirs. So, if you don't want to get Davy Jones' organ because it's just too loud for you, Carousel of Progress is your next choice. Um, if you don't already have Toy Story Mania, that is. And you can usually go on YouTube and look up the Disney rides. So... If you're interested in seeing what the real life one looks like. Yeah. Google Carousel of Progress. You will find it out. And you can go on a ride. Um, But okay. Next thing. Balancing changes. So uh, it was announced um, on the live stream that as part of an ongoing effort to continuously get all of the character sets to a very specific static point where they're basically all the same, that that Gameloft will slowly, you know, a few at a time, be making what they call balancing changes, which means adjusting the number of tokens um, either up or down um, for characters um, so that they can all um, be kind of the same. This is... Uh, what they are saying is going to be part of a huge upcoming feature, which they are very excited about. The very first time we heard about this huge upcoming feature was um, many months ago when um, the tokens were first introduced um, to the chests when they when they made the change so that tokens would continue to appear in chests until you had enough of the token to reach the maximum level. Um, So uh, that's when we first heard about this big upcoming event. That was like the first piece of the puzzle. Um, And now we have all these balance changes that are happening. So who knows how long it's going to take for this, this big awesome feature to happen. Um, I assume it will be after everything has been balanced um, I don't know how many more sets they have left to balance. Um, probably quite a few um, because there are a lot of different character sets. But once this is done, um, I'm looking forward to seeing what they're doing because they're saying it's a huge, major, big event. So we will see what happens. Yeah, and I, I saw them say later this year. So that makes me think that we're far off from it. That it's not, you know what I mean? Like, they didn't do this soon or the it was just later this year so <laughs> yeah later this year could mean like december <laughs> yeah so um and that's just the way it goes you know with development and listen i get it but uh it, we don't even get the air quotes soon yeah um, so so th- there's a lot of work that still has to be done if they plan to have everything balanced before then so we will see um keep leveling your guys um especially ones that haven't been balanced yet um, but yeah, so I'm not going to sit here and go through all of them. It was Mickey and Friends, Toy Story, and Monsters, Inc. Um, for the most part, um, ca- the amount of tokens you needed for the characters went up. So, if you, you've probably noticed it by now. Um, <laughs> if not, what, you'll notice it now. Um, all right, that's it on the balancing changes. Um, now, uh, talking about a huge, uh, feature, uh, to come that, uh, that will be a game impacting as well. Um, the news feature was added to the main screen. Um, as reported by Gameloft, the, there used to be a news feed in the uh, uh, the options menu, but they wanted to make sure that all of the Disney Magic Kingdom's players knew when new content or when new news was being broken. So now you will see on the upper right-hand corner, right below the... Uh, options menu you will see a little um mail symbol that's this it looks like a letter not like like a mail like a guy um and uh <laughs> and uh, it's not like a little circle with an arrow pointing up it's a it's an envelope and um <laughs> sorry i make my la- myself laugh sometimes so uh, you click on this and it will appear when there's new breaking news. Um, so if they say, hey, a live stream is coming or um, something like that, not only will it flash on your screen and be at the bottom of your screen, but now you'll have a little mail icon as well that will tell you all about it. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think it's a smart idea, especially for newer players. 
and for people that don't listen to my podcast or follow me on Twitter. <laughs> uh, any any, any uh, big uh, revelations that you want to talk about about that? Or the balancing changes, I guess? No. Um, I, didn't up, I didn't level up all the characters like I wanted to for the balancing changes. My Monsters, Inc. characters were ready to be leveled up, but I think I only got to one. And then I forgot. And then the news feature, yay! I had my first little icon on there for the... Just telling us about the update, really. It was like... I think it almost was like the patch notes, but a little symbol, little icon. It was nice. Yeah. I like it. It's it's nice. I'm glad it's there. I, I joke about about it, so... Uh, but in, but, in all, but in all reality, it's 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 a really cool thing to have. So, and finally, um, there a bug came with the new update. Um, as bugs sometimes happen, uh, there were no more decorations in the bronze chests. There were only tokens. Um, so people were freaking out, um, thinking that maybe this was something that um, was just undisclosed in the uh, patch notes. Um, and people were a little scared that the uh, their, their elixir production would go down a lot. Um, it turns out that, um, Disney Magic Kingdoms got on it very quickly. They were able to, um, resolve it and it is now resolved. Um, and the, uh, tokens uh, and decorations are back in the bronze chests. All right. So that is it for the game news. There was quite a lot of news this week. So, um, it's exciting stuff. Um, and we just have a lot to look forward to. We have the new permanent content that's now. We have the tower challenge stuff that's coming up. Um, and yeah, so that's it. So I'm sure you'll be hearing more from us about the tower challenge as it gets closer to that time. Uh, I would guess they're going to probably have one more live stream before the tower challenge to kind of like show us the tower challenge a little bit. Do you think? I hope so. Yeah, I, I think so, so too. And, and who doesn't like watching Mark Andre and Julia, right? <laughs> so, all right. Let's move on into the event of the week. None. Yay! Again, we had another nice week with no mini event. Uh, and thank you uh, for that um, and a, the well needed break away from events. All right, let's move on into the next segment, which is Is it worth it? This is a segment where we talk about gem characters, premium characters, and attractions. Um, we have been going through the attract the characters mostly we've talked about a few attractions but we're, we're just kind of you know getting our way through the characters and this week we get to king louis king louis costs 500 gems which is a lot of gems i believe it is the most or actually no 575 is the most right but uh but king louis 500 gems um, or King Louis and 100 gems for nine dollars and 99 cents U.S. dollars um, uh, in the bundle. King Louis collects only for Mowgli, Bahira, and Shere Khan. He does not collect for anybody else. Oh. King Louis does not collect trophies. Um, and I don't know if he does anything else. So let's get your thoughts on this. And then we also actually have a, um, a listener, uh, wrote in with, with his synopsis too. But, uh, before we move to that, let's, let's hear what you have to say about that geeky chick. I do have a King Louie, but now I can't remember if I did the bundle or the gems, but now I feel like he's not worth it. <laughs> um, yeah, just collecting for those three in his own set, you know? Yeah. So, I bought the bundle. Um, and I will tell you that for the um, for the people he does collect for, it's significantly less. You know, he, he does two-hour and four-hour quests to collect for Bakira when everyone else has, like, eight or 12 hour quests. So he gets things done quick. Um, mm -hmm. So let, let's go to uh, our review from our listener, Xavier. Um, Xavier uh, says uh, for King Louie, he's sort of uh, worth it. 
if you really want to fast forward towards Peter Pan and the Lancelot. But I'd say not really worth it, but he is better than Maximum. Ma I'm sorry, Maximus, because he has his longest quest at six hours. So that's something I didn't know. So I only have King Louis at like um, four mm -hmm. or so, like four. And the one, the, the biggest, is it not worth it character, like the least worth it character that we've got talked about so far is Maximus. Because yeah. when it comes down to it, when he's done collecting for everyone else, he his longest quest is four hours. Like he's the first one that hit that I sent out to to pasture, you know, at the at the old, you know, send him home. And uh, it's just because he only has four hour quests. So King Louis not even having eight hour quests, um, you know, at night, you know, so when you're like sending everyone out for your eight hours, that would be frustrating too. Um, and that's just something I did not know. So thank you, Xavier, for sending in that little uh, synopsis. So I I don't know. I, I'm still still working for him. I know that Shere Khan is supposed to be hard to collect for. But here is, um, I wouldn't say he's too hard to collect for. His stuff's all epic. They're long quests. But it didn't seem like it, it took me forever. Same thing with Mowgli. Uh, I, I just don't feel like it took me too long. So I think... Obviously, if you're a collector, you're going to get it. But um, this is more of if you've gotten to this point and you have limited money and limited funds, like, is it worth getting King Louis over some other characters like any of the pirates, uh, like Davy Jones or Jack Sparrow or, um, you know, other, other people we've talked about that really are extremely productive? Um, I would say no. Um, I think he's good to get if you, if you've got everyone and you just want to buy another bundle. Yeah. I mean, he's going to help you plow through, uh, the jungle book. I almost feel like with him, I almost feel like I went through the jungle book a little too quickly. Like I'm already collected. I've already got Baloo welcome, you know, ready to welcome. And then there's just Shere Khan left and it was quick, like really, really fast. So you know, he made things go quick. So it depends. If you want to go quick, he's definitely worth it. If you're not that quick and you're kind of, you know, want to spend your money wisely in another place, like I think that maybe for your $10, maybe um, getting a legendary chest bundle might, might be a good idea. You can get a couple of characters maybe that way. Um, but that's just what I think. Geeky Chick, what do you think? I agree. Yeah, yeah. I agree. After seeing that he's only collecting for those three characters and then 500 gems or $10, that's kind of high. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you again, Xavier, for um, being a contributor on this week's episode. If you would like to write in um, about anything at all, if you have any questions or concerns or you just want to chat about stuff, you can always find me on Twitter at, at ATK Podcast or Facebook.com backslash ATK Podcast. If you'd like to be a contributor and maybe write a review of Is It Worth It or, you know, add a segment or something, we're always looking for more contributions from the community. This is a really supposed to be a community-focused podcast. We really want you to be involved. So I'm always looking for new ideas. So, you know, hit us up. Um, you can also email the show at aroundthekingdompodcast at gmail.com. All right. Let's move on into the feature report. Feature report. Feature report. Feature report. <laughs> feature report is a segment where we talk about ideas or features we'd like to see implemented into the game. We have quite a few this week, um, so we're going to try to go through them real quick. Um, from Stacy, uh, Stacy says in the character book, she wishes that there was a search function. Um, and I think this is a, a cool idea. Um, I, I like it. You know, she, she said like, a, you know, a search bar, um, at the top. So you could, maybe there would be keywords like maybe, you know, one of the games I like to, to compare to is the other game that I really play a lot, which is, um, also mobile. Um, you know, it's, it's on PC, but it's also mobile. It's Hearthstone. And in Hearthstone, when you're going through your collection, you can type in, you know, keywords. For example, like if you just wanted to 
you know, for in Disney Magic Kingdom terms, like if you just wanted to like type Cinderella, you could just have like all your Cinderella characters pop up. Or maybe not just that, but then you'd have Cinderella characters popped up or characters that can do things with Cinderella characters like quests. Um, and, uh, you know, or maybe at the top of the screen, uh, you could filter by level, you know, like there'd just be like the characters one numbers one through 10. And you could just click on one of those numbers and then all your characters that, that were that level would be shown, you know, so you click nine and you know, if these are all the characters I have at level nine that I have ready to go. Um, I think it would be very handy. I've seen so many people out there using spreadsheets for that kind of stuff. And it would just be nice if there was like some built in, you know, search kind of function for that. What, uh, what do you think about that geeky chick and what would you add as like different filters or things for that? I like that. I like how you were saying put in Cinderella and not only just bring her characters, but bring up characters that could help with her. Maybe if you're looking for villains or just certain things, maybe if you could put in a ride and the attraction characters that have, you know, need to do that attraction or find, you know, a quest with that. But I think we can all agree that the character book menu is just a lot. <laughs> it's almost a little tedious scrolling through and we definitely just need something. And I've seen people want to organize different. Uh, I like the idea of the search button also. Just a better way to just tackle that whole. Yeah. No, the, um, you know, with many games, you know, their UIs, uh, user interfaces are, are designed for implementation, right? Like for, for first launch. And Disney Magic Kingdoms now, we're, we're three years later, they've added so many sets and so many new rows, you know, for like second yeah. lines of sets and, you know, different character, you know, just so much to it that, like you said, it's become a little cumbersome to scroll through all the stuff on the left-hand side um, that, I think that that specific part of the user interface is um, ready for um, some some work. So, Stacy, I, I agree with you. Um, I think that's a great idea. So, thanks for writing in. Um, all right, um, this one is from Allison. Allison says that tasks or activities uh, should show what attraction they use from the selection menu, and I love that when you. Um, go to the wiki. When you look at the Disney uh, Magic Kingdoms wiki and you look at all the quests or tasks or activities for a, um, a, a character, like they'll have a little asterisk next to it that says requires whatever attraction. You know, so for example, like the Bambi car- you know, ones would say like requires this or that. I think that, uh, that it would be cool if, if that... They, they had that in the in the, in, in the selection menus as well. What do you think? Yeah, I like that. Um, I don't know if it's like a, a major thing for me, but I do like knowing because a lot of times uh, the attraction, I'll have it put away for space. Right. And so you know right then, okay, I need this out. And maybe even like an indication that you don't have, well, no, they kind of already do that if you don't have the, the attraction placed, it'll show that you need it. You right, know. but and it would be all the way at the bottom. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I I kind of like the idea that that it shows it there. Like you know, uh, mm-hmm. it maybe you know maybe just even again, like, and I've said this about a lot of our features is like have like an advanced features menu, where like you could toggle it on and off. So have it off yeah. by default, but then for more experienced players, you know, just turn it on. I think I don't think there'd be harm in it, um, and I don't think it would be that difficult to program. So I think it's a cool idea. Um, all right, finally um, from Brooke. Um, Brooke actually sent this in as a question to a geeky chick, um, but I thought we'd make it a cool little feature report segment. She said, "Do you think we can make the kingdom viewable from multiple angles?" Uh, yeah, I'd love that. I would love a 360 being able to like. You know, be able to pinch and kind of like rotate the kingdom. Like, how awesome would that be? So I, I remember this was asked like a long time ago. And somebody said like, it's like flat the way they designed it. And the way the game is. Like, I wish I could find the picture or whatever. But it's like, it's flat. 
<laughs> makes sense, but it like pushed up. The well, Wii was not actually like a 360 model. You know what I mean? It's not right, a full right, right. It, it, it's a two dimensional, two dimensional uh, uh, model. So they would have to. I think it would be like a major. major I don't even know if it's possible. Graphical overhaul. Yeah, like I don't even know if that's possible. I mean, the game's already heavy. Huh. Heavy as in, you know what I mean? Like a big download file. Like, <laughs> right. That heavy. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> I don't know. It would be cool to be able to, to do that. Um, I don't know. Even like zooming out farther, just being able to kind of, I, I guess, just even even just having some more camera control um, would be nice. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I would like to zoom in more. I always like find myself wishing I can zoom in. Yeah, no, there are definitely things I'd like to zoom in for too. So, uh, yeah. But anyway, thank you for the question, Brooke. Uh, and thank you for all the feature reports. If you have a feature you'd like to see implemented, please write into our any of our various social media platforms and let us know. Your idea could be on next week's show. Uh, now we're going to go around the community. We have a bunch of community questions. So, um, Geeky Chick, take it away. Why don't you read, th- read these questions out? Okay, Aiden says, would you enjoy having two separate collections have dialogue? So this, like, I'm guessing asking if they would interact. And we kind of got a little bit of taste of that during, was it the last tower challenge with the villains? And that was really fun. I enjoyed that. So, yeah, I, would, I think I would like it. Uh, but I guess it could get, like, too much. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like it could get like too many and too confusing. But with the villains, I thought that was fun. I, I thought it was awesome. I think the villains event was absolutely incredible. Um, and I loved the way that they had the dialogue between characters. Um, but I do agree that, uh, you know, keep it limited. Keep it, you know, for special occasions. But I, I did enjoy it. Okay, the next one from... What, how do I say that? I would say it's from W. Witkowski. Witkowski. Should they make elixirs available to purchase with gems? Or- so I would say no. Like my first thing is like no, because then they might as well just make the items gems instead of using gems to buy elixirs. But I do think that there we need better ways to earn elixir besides just turning in repeat items in chests because we're not even getting those as often as we used to. I feel like, and then they're still making multiple rides, 30,000 Elixir, and we need a better way. We definitely need a better way to get Elixir. But I, I wouldn't want it to be just buying it with gems or money. I completely agree. Um, I love the fact that there's a coveted item that you know, allows you to like disenchant items, or, you know, brew them into the cauldron, if you will. Um to get this special kind of elite, you know, item that you can only get that way or from daily rewards mm-hmm. uh, or, and, or I'm sorry, if also from, um, from your, uh, repetitive daily rewards as well. But, uh, but I think that the, the way to get it needs to be, there needs to be some other way to get it. I, you can make it hard to get, but I feel like the the elixir production's way, way, way too slow right now, and uh, it's discouraging. I mean, uh, I'd like to have mm-hmm. some of the other things, uh, but it just feels like they're they're just so out of sight right now. You know, like like I was I was able to get Toy Alien and get get enough of his stuff up to uh, to the point where he can you know get his own things, but like that was very exhaustive of, of my elixir. And I've been saving and saving and saving and saving, and like I, I, I'm like only two thirds of the way towards a, an attraction, and there's like a lot of attractions that I'd like to have. So it takes a very, very long time, and I wish there was a way for it to go even just a little bit faster. Um, so, All right. Okay. Um, <laughs> really, let me read this one. <laughs> um, JD says, "Is am I? <laughs> will you please pin this post?" I'm a big fan, and I will cry if you pen this. So. Start start crying, because we read it <laughs> on the show. JD, you're officially pinned. Boop! Pinned forever. Pinned. Start crying. 
<laughs> okay. And Slayer says, do you think we will ever see Black Cauldron characters? Do you think we will ever be able to level multiple characters at a time? I'm not familiar with Black Cauldron characters. Uh, well, Black Black Cauldron is a fantastic movie. Um, and uh, The Sword in the Stone. Um, oh, it's, is that what it is? The Sword in the Stone? Or no? Uh, yeah, it, it was... Uh, let me, let me see. So there was um, uh, Taran, and um, and then there is the Evil Horn King, um, and then he, yeah he has the sword. Um, and there's a, a princess, um, and then he has like a little sidekick. What's his name? Gurgi or something. Um, mm-hmm. And then there's dragons and all sorts of stuff. And uh, well, I think Sword in the Stone is. Is separate the Sword in the Stone, but oh. yeah, Sword in the Stone separate. I apologize, but the Black Cauldron was a really good movie, but it's dark. It is, mm-hmm. uh, it's definitely dark. It's not something I would I would put on for my kid yet, um, but I, I think it would be awesome to have Black Cauldron characters uh, in the game. I just don't think it's a high priority for them. I don't think it was that big of a franchise that they would put it in, and I think they have lots of bigger bigger uh, fish to fry right now. Yeah. And then, do you think we'll ever be able to level multiple characters at a time? I hope so. I yeah, really I, do. I think we've, we're, you know, same thing with the user interface of being too clunky for, you know, sorting the characters. I think that the design of only leveling one character at a time is reaching its um, maximum capacity because you, yeah. there are just too many characters. You know, it was designed when they were only, let's say, like 75 characters. And now there's 150 plus characters, so it's impossible to catch up. It's it's with... very it's very very hard uh, to yeah. to keep to keep it going, and uh, I, I feel like eventually there'll be another slot. Yeah, to be able to max out everybody, especially because you're thinking it's from a new player's point of view. So you're starting with low level and you're trying to get everybody leveled up. Like you said, over a hundred characters. Everybody's got to get to level 10, level 10, 24 hours. Yeah. You know what? You not know, enough time in the day. <laughs> you know what I think the worst part about, about level, you know, leveling high level characters is, is like when you have a bunch of like four hour, eight hour, even like two, one, two, four hour quests or levelers. It's like when you cho- make that choice to do 24 hour, like one or two 24 hours in a row, or even a 16 and a 24 and an eight, mm-hmm. right? All of your other guys from other sets finish collecting tokens. So, like, you mm-hmm. know, like, right now, like, because I've been working on trying to, you know, do the other, you know, Toy Story, Mickey, etc. Um, all of my Lilo and Stitch and my Aladdin and, you know, like all the newer sets that I bought, they're not collecting tokens. They're just going out and earning magic. Yeah. Uh, and it feels bad when, when, you, when, you're, when you're still working on sets and they're just literally just doing nothing. So it would be nice if you could, like, have... Like, even if there was, like, a, a big slot and a little slot, you know? like or, or something where, like, you know, you could send someone out for 16 or 24 hours. And then you could have someone else that's, like, 8 hours or less, you know? Yeah. So that you, you could have multiple people going at once. I think it's going to be an important thing that they do eventually. Yeah. And the last question... From Sahar Candy? Yeah, so Sahar is uh, on Twitter, at Candy56000. Okay. And Sahar mm-hmm. asks, um, what's your advice on the best way to get magic faster? Log in often. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's, a, the, I think, like the most basic <laughs> way to say it. But, I mean, to get a little more detailed, you kind of have to see how long be realistic. How often can you love log into the game and then send those characters? So if you know, every hour, every two hours, four hours, try to send the characters out when you know you can log in. Cause you're wasting. If you send them on 60 minute, but you're not logging in for another two or three hours, it's a waste. So you send them for four hours. If that's realistic for you and you try to log in as much every time you log in, make sure you always collect the buildings. Even if Merlin's spell isn't up, Still, you can either watch a video to refresh that or 
go through and manually, like we used to have to do, <laughs> manually collect all the buildings. But it's really about logging in as often as you can and sending characters out on quests. And then some people do the farming, putting out a bunch of concession stands. But even that, you have to make sure you're logging in as soon as those concession stands are up and, you know, continuing that cycle. Otherwise, you're not making your magic back that you spent on the concession stands. Yeah, um, I, I agree. Also, one of the if you have a whole bunch of concession stands in storage, like I'm at the point now where I got so many different sets that I have mm -hmm. a ton of concessions in storage because I had to put out attractions for my new sets because um, their quests and activities require the attractions out. If you have a set that's done, like if you're you you're done with let's say the Incredibles, right? You have they're all at level ten. So all you're doing is setting them out on quests, right? I would start looking at putting um, attractions away and putting out concessions instead. Because depending on the size, I mean, Omnidroid City is just ridiculous in itself, right? Yeah. But depending on the size of the attractions um, and the frequency of how often you check, like the, you know, like Geeky Chick was saying, like some, some attractions are like eight-hour attractions, you know, so you're only getting, you know, eight hours out of them. But if you could replace them with four four-hour concessions and you're checking the game every four hours, you're going to get a lot more magic per yeah. square foot. If you want to, you know, you know <laughs> talk about it that way, then you would with an attraction. So when, like, you know, I've always noticed, like, when I open up a new land slot and I, and I, and I didn't have any attractions to put there, and I just filled it up with concessions. I mean, I, my magic was flying. You know, I was just earning so much magic. And then as I would start having to tear down concession stands to put new rides up, um, my production went down. So I think concession stands, depending on your frequency for checking, will give you more uh, magic production per square foot um, <laughs> than, than an attraction. That is my advice. All right. Well, some other things around the kingdom. Not a whole lot to talk about. Um, Nightmare Before Christmas chests came around for a little while, and frozen chests were around for a little while. They are um, have come and gone since the past week. Right now, Beauty and the Beast and Big Hero 6 chests are available. So if you need to work on those, um, go ahead and get them. Um, and yeah, add them to your collections if you need them. Uh, we had one new five-star rating, so thank you to the person who gave us a five-star rating, but we did not have any new five-star reviews this week. Um, please uh, head on over to iTunes and leave us a five-star review. It really helps us get seen um, and visible by more players, um, so it's a big, big way to say thank you and help out the show without spending a penny, and it just takes about two minutes of your time. All right, well, that's it for this week. Some shout-outs. Um, I'd like to give two shout-outs this week. Uh, my first shout-out goes to Xavier for writing up summaries for this week and next week's uh, Is It Worth It segment. Um, and uh, also, um, my, my second shout-out I want to give to a couple of members um, who have been really um, spotlight contributors. Um, so every week what I want to do is kind of spotlight some members who have been really active on Twitter or uh, in the Facebook group. Um, so I want to give a big shout out to uh, Ismail, uh, Kelly, uh, Alicia, Matt, and Leslie. Um, th you're going to be this week's spotlight contributors to our groups. Thank you so much for all that you've been doing um, and posting and commenting. Uh, it really makes a big difference for the community, and, and thank you so much. Geeky Chick, any shout outs for you? Yeah, I am like always unprepared for this segment of your show. <laughs> Next time, I will be properly prepared and have real shout outs. But until then, thank you to everybody. Okay. <laughs> All right. Next week's show, we have the return of Around the Kingdom's official comedian, court jester, and of course, internet blogger extraordinaire. He returns for another episode, Jason Headley. Um, that was a really, really fun show, and I'm really looking forward to having him back on the show next week. So make sure you tune in. Um, we are guaranteed to get a smile from you. 
If you want to be more involved with the show, you can follow us on Twitter at at ATK Podcast and like our Facebook page at facebook.com backslash ATK Podcast. Here you'll find out before anyone else about any breaking news that we hear, information on contests and giveaways, when new shows are published, and of course my ramblings and photos from my day-to-day playing. The show's Facebook group is up and it's a great way to easily interact with me and other fans of the show to talk about our favorite game. The link to our group will be in the show notes and can also be found on the show's main Facebook page. Also, you can write into the show. Our email address is aroundthekingdompodcast at gmail.com. Let us know what you think about the show, what's working, what's terrible, or any other topic you want to write in about. Or even just write in if you want to say hi. If you want to help support the show, please head on over to iTunes, subscribe to the podcast, and leave us a five-star review. Doing this is quick and easy, costs you nothing, but helps us greatly to be seen by other people so they can enjoy the show also. All five-star reviews will be read at the end of each episode. Listening to the show is all we could really ask for, but if you do want to help us uh, support us in another way, please check out our Patreon page at patreon.com backslash around the kingdom. Running the podcast does have some overhead, so this is a great way to show your support for about a dollar an episode. The page was just put up, and we'll be adding some cool rewards to the tiers of support, but for now, you'll get a special shout-out at the beginning of each episode. Again, it's patreon.com backslash around the kingdom. The link will be in the show notes. Thanks again for joining us this week. Lots of exciting stuff to talk about. Um, I'm so glad you guys were here. I am Steve Squirrel. For myself and a geeky chick, we hope you have a great night, and we will see you around the kingdom next week. Goodbye.